hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome if this is your first time here thank you so much for deciding to join i am judy's family i'm so grateful and let's grow i am judy's channel together so today today i want to tell you a story an emotional story story of a facebook friend that became family story of a man i respect so much story of a man i pray for all the days of my life that god will give him more life story of a man that i don't know if i will ever be able to reward him in my entire life in this world no matter how much i do yeah so in 2014 yeah I got pregnant with my baby girl, my firstborn. And during that time, like my supposed baby daddy and I, like we were not in good terms because apparently there was some lady also somewhere he was seeing. So, unajua to fall in love, yeah? This was my first love like you give him your all you are with him in everything you just love him so much i think this is the only relationship i ever cried in i cried i broke things i fought i poured water in the house and all that stuff and i think he even nicknamed me a drama queen something like that so after getting actually when we broke up with my supposed baby daddy then uh i was not yet sure whether i was pregnant or not so it's like we are breaking up and i love him so much i just don't want to let go and what have you so i was like you breaking up with me and i'm pregnant i was not sure if i was pregnant yet yeah so after the drama I decided to leave. Yeah. So on leaving all that loneliness and uh I used to cry, heartbreak and I was staying alone. So this friend of mine that we had been talk that I had been talking to just chatting on Facebook comes in. And I really needed someone to talk to. I really, really, really needed someone to talk to. Yeah. So I talked to him and like he's the only one I could talk to. He's the only one I found myself opening up and telling him everything, everything, everything. And he would advise me. And at times like he would call, we just meet in town, have like sometimes just eat chipo and story. Then... Napanda Gari, I go back to where I was staying. I was staying uh, around Kawangwari. I don't know if Kabiria is in Kawangwari or Dagoreti. I was staying in Kabiria. Yeah, so I went on with my pregnancy. I went on with my pregnancy. We will talk. Then at some point, now this friend of mine, like, he started hitting on me. So my motive was not even to like to have a boyfriend at that time but now the thought of the man that i loved having a woman at that time made me want to do it yeah so he hit on me and just even before i said yes yeah, my supposed baby daddy comes back and that day i just so I'm like, where has he come from? So he comes in and I let him in. That was like three weeks now after we had broken up. He comes and, and you know, I welcomed him and he sat down and the first thing he did was took my phone. So I never used to have password on my phone. So when he took my phone, he went directly to WhatsApp and checked on messages. He found my messages with this friend of mine. Well, I'm just going to mention him. So he finds my messages with Dan. He insulted Dan. 
I don't know what's wrong with you men. Like he had a woman back in the house. And here he's coming to insult another man who is not even my boyfriend. Like he was just there for me when like nobody else was at least at that time. So he insulted Dan and was like, leave my wife alone. I don't ever want to hear of anything from you. I will look for you. I will you know, do what and what have you and so much stuff. And he became so emotional and like he insisted, I want you to call this guy. I want you to call this guy and tell him you are tell him you're pregnant and you're pregnant for me. And initially, my supposed baby daddy had even denied that he cannot make a woman pregnant. So that like he could make the other lady happy. So I said, okay. I took my phone, pretended like I was calling. I did not even call. At that time, the supposed baby daddy was so mad that uh, he was not even listening. So I did not even, I just faked some call there and uh, it was a Kaisha. So he insulted Dan. He really, really insulted Dan. And he thought that now Dan is my, is, Dan is my boyfriend. So Dan did not reply. He did not insult back. He was never even mad. So the next day, after things have cooled down, I decided to call him. And he was like, no, I was not even mad. It's just okay. I understand him. I understand where he's coming from and what have you. I'm a man. So I said, okay. So I tried telling my ex that I'm not even dating this guy. He's just here for me because no one else is. He refused and refused to listen. So I said, fine. Kama mbaya mbaya, kama kananuka wacha, kanuke. So we continued talking with Dan. I continued talking with Dan. Then now, Ile tu karibu nengia box yake pap. My best friend, who is now his legally married, like his legally married wife, comes. He had come from coast to come work in Nairobi. So actually, I did not know that uh, he had a girlfriend who was my best friend. My best friend also did not know that I knew I knew Dan, but I met Dan before I met my best friend. All of them from Facebook. Yeah. So he comes, my best friend tells me, well, you know I'm also pregnant. And I'm like, wow, when are we pregnant at the same time? That's good news. And by the way, almost our babies come like almost at the same time. So, and I'm like, who is the baby daddy? I want to know. Like, who is the boyfriend? I want to know. Then he tells he tells me, you know such and such a person with this name on Facebook? And I'm like, yeah. And he tells me, she tells me, yeah, ni uyo. So I was like, hey, okay. But uyo alikuwa na nekatia. Like, I did not hide. Nekasema, ha, nisawa. So I went, I called Dan, and we talked. And I told him, actually, this is my best friend. And you are also my friend and you have been here for me. So I don't want like to spoil anything between us. Like I don't want anything bad between us. So you be with your woman and make sure your baby is born. And at least we all will be here to celebrate. And that is how our friendship solidified. So my best friend understood that this guy was my friend even before I met her. So like he never thought of anything bad, like we will do anything bad and what have you. So I'm pregnant. My best friend is pregnant and it's all fun. Yeah. So Dan will check on me. Dan will check on me like not a day would pass without him asking how my day is, how I'm doing and what have you. Then uh, uh, it's my pregnancy. I, I took long to deliver. Let me see. I delivered at around 10 months, three weeks. Actually, my best friend who was supposed to deliver after me did deliver 10 days before me. So I delivered at 10 months, three weeks. So he would check and he was really worried. He would call a sweeto. He calls me a sweeto. A sweeto is a low name. A sweeto in English means sweetheart. So he will call me, Asuito, how are you doing? How are you at the baby? Is the baby kicking? And he's a clinical nurse, something like that. 
So Helen, how is the baby doing? Is the baby kicking? Are you people eating? And I used to eat. Like literally, I used to eat. I had a timetable. My best friend was so perfect at preparing Mrenda. So uh, when it, like we Mrenda Mondays were for Mrenda at like my best friends. My best my best friend was the one to cook Mrenda for me to eat on Monday. Then there was another friend of mine who was so perfect at cooking maini and fish and what have you. Then chapo and uh, nyama, chapo and beef stew, I would eat at my auntie's on Saturday. So I used to eat. My belly was like this big. You would think I was carrying twins. Then I'm so short. So I was round. Yeah? So on, on 4th March, 2015 my labor came so during that time at least we were in good terms with my baby daddy with my ex baby daddy it's like the situation was not that bad but when my labor came it was on 4th march 2015 at 3 a.m in the morning I felt an urge to go and pee and going. I went to pee, came back, slept. Before I go to the bed, another urge. So I asked my mom, mom, what's not going on? Because my mom had come. I had taken for long, for, I had taken so long. So I was up to go for a CS, something like that. So my mom tells me, that's the baby coming. You just prepare and go. So I prepared and went to Mama Lucy. I was at my auntie's in Lomoja, so I just boarded number 17 B, mpaka hapo kwa chief, then just walked to Mama Lucy. So when I got to Mama Lucy, the first person I called was Dan. So I called Dan and told Dan, a sweet uh, like he would, he, he used to call like my baby, his baby. So I'm like, a sweet our baby is coming. And he told me, okay, I'm coming. So he asked me, what do I bring for you when coming? So I told I told him, just bring me anything. So he was the first person to visit me, like at Mama Lucy, before I even delivered. So he brought me cotton wool, he brought me queen cakes, he brought me water, he brought me fruits, he brought me milk. All this, like he was from work. He left work during lunch hour to come and see me. And he kept coming. He would come at lunchtime. He would come in the evening. So my labor was a prolonged labor. So on 5th, I have still not given birth. He comes and he's like, a sweet oh, body, like a sweet oh, not yet. Yeah? And I'm like, eh, hey, I've almost had enough of this. And he would stay with me. He came during like lunchtime. He would come in the evening just to check on me. And during that time, like his wife, now my best friend, had also like delivered. And imagine he sacrificed. He would come. My his his wife also has a small baby. She doesn't know how to handle a small baby because like it's her first time. So I finally on sixth at one uh, fifteen am in the morning on 6th i was scheduled for an emergency cs and i had my first one you don't want to know the second person in that hospital after my mom it was done yani I'd say, I don't know. So the second person to get to the hospital to see me after my mom was done. And he came with a friend. And he was so happy. And he was like, finally, finally, God has blessed you. And my best friend wanted to come. And like, her baby is still just 10 days old. So like, she could not. Dan came and I stayed at Mama Lucy for one week and for that one week like Dan was the first man who carried my baby the first man who carried my baby and sat on that bed beside me even before supposed, the supposed father of the kid like so for that one week he continued coming he would come 
bring me fruits just come and check on how i'm doing until after a week i stayed at mama lucy for one week so like he even looked for a vehicle to carry me when going home yeah from the hospital but the ex baby daddy had organized something so on the day he came to see me the first day after delivery <laughs> he got into he got to the hospital before uh, my baby daddy my ex baby daddy let me say then now you know this is someone you've been seeing like how he's grooving with your woman how like he's next to your wife and like you just mad at him and it's someone you don't even know hmm? then you imagine uh, you come he came, you come to the hospital and the person you meet is that person you have been like accusing falsely is there even before you to see your supposed baby mama yeah like the reaction was funny even how my ex baby daddy looked at Dan, like it was just funny <laughs> it was just funny so yeah fast forward i went home and two weeks after I got home, Dan came to see me. He came with his wife and their little baby. That was a sacrifice. That was a sacrifice. So by that time, yeah, I was staying in a one-bedroom house. Then because of prolonged pregnancy and I got so tired, I stopped working. I was working with an insurance company. So, you know, with insurance companies, if you've accumulated a certain, like if you've accumulated a salary and as long as the clients are paying their premiums, even if you're not working those premiums, like the percentages for those premiums that had, had accumulated, you will automatically be paid. So, I was staying in a one-bedroom house this time and it's me and the baby. So, after I stayed with my mom for a month, then my mom went back. So before my mom went, my mom told me, like, this house is too big and you have a child and you are alone. Like, you're not assured of any support from anyone. So what I want you to do, I want you to get yourself a smaller house. So that time I was staying in Lakisama and Dan and the wife were staying in Kayoli. So I called Dan and I told Dan, a sweet one. I want to move and I want to move because one, I fear a child. Like I stayed with my mom for one month. She would birth the baby. She would change the baby. She would do everything and only give me the baby to breastfeed. I swear the first time in three weeks, after three weeks and my mom gave me the baby to wash, I cried because I don't even know from where to hold this baby. And then like she was a kapum pum. So to me, she's still so fragile. I think that she will even fall down and what a view. And so like I said, if my mom leaves and I remain here alone, like I'm going, it's going to be one hell of a struggle. So I called Dan. I told Dan, I I want to, like I'm looking for a house. And what I want to do, I want to move near you people so that at least wewe, auna shida na mtoto. Like you can massage, you can do all that, you can help me with the baby. And it was like fine. This guy went and looked for a house just across the road. It was not far from where they were staying. He went and looked for a house. I sent him money. He paid for the rent and deposit in his name in his name and got the house cleaned that when i was coming from lakisama i came into a completely like clean house it was a very nice bed sitter so when i came since he's the one who paid the rent and all those people like if you pay the rent and then a woman with a child comes it looks like she's your wife yeah so the neighbors knew that like Dan was like my husband, something like that. And he would come, he would so because we were staying near, every day he came from work, he would go to his house, bath his girl, massage, dress well, carry her, come to my house, bath my own baby, massage her, make sure like she's well fed, then go back to his house. And he did that every day.
On Sundays, he would insist that we are going to church. And you know, my baby was so heavy. He would carry my baby as we go to church. And his wife and I, now we carry the other baby like to exchange yarn. We go to church and we come back. On Sundays, he we, like together with the wife, they would call me. We go spend time at their place, like together, cook, eat, and sometimes even sleep there. And sometimes, like life was so tough. I'm alone. I don't have money. I have a small child, and I will just tell them like, "Hey, Mimi Leo, ni melemewa," and like. There's no single day that I ever slept hungry. There's no single day that I ever slept hungry while Dan and my best friend were there. Like, he stood in. He stood in as a dad. When If my baby fell sick, the first person like I would call was him. If anything was not correct, the first person I would call was him. Sometimes I just feel like there's no one I can talk to. And he was always like, I am here. Like, life became so hard. I had to move, like, uh, from Kayole, still come to Kibera. And would, he will still come from Kayole, come to Kibera together with the wife pick me up so that we can go back to Kayol and just make sure that I am fine. Just make sure that I am fine. Like, he took my child like his own. During that period, things were tough for me. And he would like, don't worry, like, things will be okay. Don't worry, things will be normal. Don't worry, things will be fine. Don't worry, you will get off it. And he will tell me, you know, sometimes if things are difficult, me, I just let them be. Like I don't stress myself so much. And I, I looked at him and I still look at him today. And even if he's far, every night, I can never fail like to mention this guy's name and his family in my prayers. And I've always wanted like to do for him something just for an appreciation in return. I don't know what I can do. I can ever do to him like that can make up for everything that he did for me and my child. I don't know. And I don't think if there ever is. Some people were born with beautiful hearts. And to date, like, he went back home. But he still will always text and ask, Osiepa, how are you doing? Okay, Osiepa in Luo means my friend. How are you doing? How are the babies doing? Like, he just wants to know that I'm doing fine. Like, what this man did, did for me and my child is not what any other man would do outside here. Many men would do it wanting something in return. And then I want you to know wherever you are, whatever you do, no matter how difficult things become, Like, I never want to stop being your friend. I never want to stop being friends with a heart like yours. For the rest of my life, as long as I live, and a daughter that you called yours, she has grown, she's five, just the same age as your first daughter. I want you to continue being who you are. A beautiful heart, a beautiful soul, one who helps without like expecting anything in return. <sighs> I'm only human. I cannot reward you enough. 
but I know God in heaven saw what you did for me. And God in heaven will reward you accordingly. Yeah? So I pray for you. I pray for you, Dan Daily. I pray for your family. I pray that things will always be like right for you because someone like you, you deserve nothing but the best. Thank you so much for being my friend. Thank you so much for coming into my life at a time that I was most vulnerable. And thank you so much for still being there. Yeah, I think I'm going to end there. Until next time, bye.